All right. Good evening, everyone. Hi. So I'm not going to be too long today because I know everybody has things to do. They need to sleep. They need to have something to eat, etc. So I am going to be a little bit short. Is that all right? Okay. Now, everyone can hear me, right? If my voice does this, in, you know, in some instances, it's because I'm getting over uh, allergies. So I'm sorry for that in advance. Um, I am from the Caribbean island of St. Lucia, like I said again. I have been in Taiwan for two years. Huh? And now I'm doing my master's in Jeddah. Okay, so it's East Asia Regional um, Pacific Studies. And um, I'm interested in cultural diplomacy, um, Northeast Asia and the Caribbean. So that's what I'm doing right about now. Um, but today I wanted to share a little bit of my life's journey, um, you know, my, my life in Taiwan. And please permit me to look at this, okay? Because I have a little story that I wanted to read and I haven't really, you know, remembered it completely. So sorry about that. Now, <clears throat> I wanted to be more interactive. I wanted to look at your faces, so I would not really be looking at this. All you need to know is that from the pond to the ocean, and then foreigner, journey, acceptance. Those are actually the only two slides that I have in my presentation. So we will go back, okay, from the pond to the ocean. <clears throat> Anyways, as you can see, the topic of my presentation is from the pond to the ocean, my life's journey in Taiwan. <clears throat> now, according to what I have here, it's a continuous journey, right? Like I said, I'm a master's student, which means I have an additional two years. So at the end of my program, I would have been in Taiwan for four years, right? Now, I don't want to focus on this journey through time alone. I want to focus on the journey that goes deeper, you know, to my heart, to my soul, right? For you see, in these two years, two months, and 20 days, I hope I got that in my friend. Yeah, so two years, two months, and 20 days, all right, that I have been in Taiwan, I have been taken from the place that I used to be and brought closer, or actually set on the path to the place where I want to be. And the place where I want to be is me. Okay. I was told upon coming to Taiwan in 2011 that if I wanted to see a fish, I go to a pond. If I want to see a whale, I go to the ocean. Okay, well, that, that's perfect, you know. I mean, that described my life, you know, up to this point. I spent 17 years of my life from birth to end of high school in the Caribbean, in my home. Then I spent four years in the United States for my undergraduate degree, right? During that time, I've been to Europe, I've been to Africa, I've been to the Middle East, just for visiting, okay? Now I will be taking the furthest journey of my entire life, okay? And I will be here for one year. Well, at first, I thought it was one year. And I still remember those words about, you know, going to a pond to see a fish, going to the ocean to see a whale. And, you know, it does, you know, have all of the wonders of learning a new language, learning a new culture, seeing new people, trying new food, everything like that. But for me, you know, it held something very personal, you know. But you see, I was not just looking at a fish. I was the fish, you know. My pond was surrounded by stones and rocks. And those, to me, signified my fears, my insecurities. You know, things I felt that I would not be able to jump over or to swim through, okay? And being in that little pond, it kept me safe because it was something that I was used to, right? Always save the familiar, that's what some people say. And I was experiencing life, so I thought. And, you know, but, but not fully, at least 
now that I'm realizing I, I haven't I haven't been experiencing life fully. But do you guys understand what I'm talking about? That that sort of feeling? You understand that? Eh? Okay, because I want to make sure that everybody understands before I continue. Okay? Okay, good. Um so that fear, okay, prevents us from being who we are or actually who we were meant to be. Right? And that prevents us from standing proud of who we are, no matter where we are. And as a foreigner in Taiwan, I was sent on a journey of acceptance. Okay. Now, not just acceptance about the place, but acceptance about myself. No. I mean, I was more excited to be in Asia more than anything else. If you can ask my friends, from the time I was small, I was like, I want to go to Asia, I want to go to Asia. I wanna... My first place that, of study, I guess, I wanted to go to Japan. I really wanted to go to Japan. I had learned Japanese for a year in my country, because my teacher was from Hokkaido, and her husband came, and they stayed with their kids, and so she taught us Japanese. But anyway, that's another story. But I just always found myself so interested in this region so i mean the food is different the customs and behaviors are a little different and but i got over that i mean now i can pretty much eat almost anything i have a problem <laughs> and i'm starting to well not starting to i've become more familiar you know with the culture you know taiwanese people and their customs and everything like that uh, but every time I step on a train, get on the bus, walk around campus, to go buy something, I am constantly reminded of who I am. Wushu I know this, right? I, this is what I hear on the train, on the bus, on the school, I, I hear it all the time, okay? But it took me accepting the fact that I am a tall, dark-skinned person with this hair, okay? <laughs> Living in a society that is predominantly Asian, okay? It took that realization for me to figure out that I need to be less foreign to myself, you know? I need to start accepting myself because that's the only person I have here. I mean, I have my friends. I have people who have taken me to places here who have taught me so much, but at the end of the day, this is what I have, you know? This is what you have. No matter where you go, that's what you carry with you. And if you can't accept that, then you're not really living. So, <clears throat> At this stage in our lives, well, I don't know, maybe some of you have already passed that stage. Um, but nevertheless, we are finding out who we are. So we're always trying to find ourselves. Trying not to be afraid and trying to simply be. I'm coming to you like this, you guys are probably wondering like, wow, did she really have those fears? Did she really have those insecurities? But yeah, I still do. Like I said, it's a continuous journey and everybody's on it. And it's almost like I was thrown from my little pond into open waters. And I met, like I said, I met my friends who were also like little fishes in that ocean who were also trying to find their way, also trying to see themselves in relation to where they were. And it takes being put out of your comfort zone to realize the person that you are. Right? and to hold on to that. And these sorts of journeys that take you out into the ocean, into the world, you know, trying different flavors, speaking in different languages, living with others who are not quite, you know, like yourself, can sometimes be that very thing that makes that little fish confident in itself enough to keep afloat against the ocean tide. And that's my presentation.